Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Answers Yes podcast, where we will explore the cause and effect of just saying yes in your everyday life or in business. I will dig into topics that are not just stimulating, but will challenge you to be better in everything you do. The podcast is based on the simplicity of saying yes to opportunities you might encounter every single day. I'm your host, Jim Riley. Join me in my first series titled, Blue Collar Redefined. Hello and welcome to the Answer Just yes podcast. Thanks for tuning in this week. I really appreciate it. The great show last week with Todd from Stark Gyms. I really appreciated the insight that he had about his gym and his career and how he got to where he's at. And I just know that they've got some incredible clients that love going there. I myself am a heart fit fanatic out here in Glendora, California with Jordan. And if you didn't catch my other show, I'm actually in the process of training for an ultra beast marathon in Lake Tahoe. Uh, gosh, it's all, all the way in September. It's going to be 30 miles and probably about 70 obstacles. So training hard for that already. It's taken its toll on me. I'm a little bit more tired than I normally am, but that's okay. Grinding through the day, as they say. Things are going well with Baja United. I had a great weekend and a couple different days of visiting the valley down there and spending some time with the wineries and Drew Deckman over at his place and having some great food, Monte Chenique and all the others. If you have not tried to get down to Baja, please check it out. It's worth the drive down or take a tour. I'd be happy to connect you and get you in front of the right people and make sure that you go to the right wineries and dinner reservations and all that good stuff. Everybody's having a great time that goes down there. So please don't miss out. Enjoy what we're talking about. Baja United is there for you. And we still do have our start engine capital raise campaign going on. If you're interested, it is $5 a share, minimum $100 investment. And you can own a piece of the company I've been talking about. So we'd love to have you. I enjoyed uh, Father's Day this last weekend. I hope all the fathers out there listening did the same. I know uh, my job was to spend the day with my girls on Saturday, and they made me a great barbecue steak lunch with my father-in-law, and we enjoyed all of that. And then Sunday, on actual Father's Day, I went back to Baja. I spent it with my lovely wife, Samantha, and again, enjoyed another full day down there with my neighbors and just passing the time doing what I felt like doing, I guess, for the first time. So anyways, congrats to all the fathers out there. I hope they had a great weekend and were able to do something that they like. This week's show is uh, it's pretty interesting. I've got Bruce Penhall on the show, as you probably saw in the title and when it downloaded. He is also a father, and he's had some tragedy in his life as a father losing a son. And I'm really uh, proud of him that he's able to talk about it and make a change for the good within that. But uh, he's got an incredible story from, uh, you know, if you look at his Wikipedia, which is fun to do on a lot of people, anywhere from... Well, he's been a champion motorcycle racer in Speedway, won the world championship two times. But then below that, it's a big acting career, and he was known for being on Chips. The uh, I guess it was a TV show in the 80s. A lot of us were around for that. I know I enjoyed a few episodes. And then uh, a number of TV shows and or movies. So he had a lustrous career in acting. But then he went back into the concrete cutting business. You've probably seen his trucks out there that say Connor concrete cutting and coring. I've seen him anywhere from Disneyland to the freeways late at night working away, uh, hopefully not causing too much traffic for y'all. So anyways, please listen to the show. I think Bruce has a great story to tell. It's very interesting to see and hear about his yeses along the way. And I think you're thoroughly going to enjoy it. So again, thanks for tuning in. And if you like this podcast, please share it with others. Um, We had a great moment of success last week. We were finally approved by iHeartRadio which is now covering our show. So that's great stuff for us. So without further ado, here's Bruce Penhall and myself at the Blue Sea Advertising Headquarters, our little office that we do some of these recordings at. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to the Answers Yes podcast. We are here in the Blue Sea Advertising Headquarters recording another show. I've got a great guest today and we are on a roll over here in Costa Mesa, California. I've got Bruce Penhall with me. 
How are you today? I'm good, Jim. How about yourself? Dude, you, uh, you just have the coolest name in history, I think. <laughs> Maybe it's my generation, but... Oh, uh, I don't know about that. I think I have. A, it has a lot to do with my, my father from the past in the construction days. You yeah. know, the Penhall Company, the red and gray trucks, so... You know, it's uh, it's good. Yeah, you for the most part, you can't miss them, man. You got those trucks are everywhere. Your new yeah. company's everywhere. Um, but we've got a lot to talk about before we get to construction and what you're doing currently. You know, because uh, you've had a, a a full life. You know, I was going to say, do we really have to talk about construction <laughs> today? <laughs> no, it's it's okay. I'm teasing. I got to tell. I try to thing. I try to do a little research before I interview somebody, even if I know them. And uh, I was watching some of those old YouTube reels of you. Back oh. in the day when you were over in Europe and it says Penhall, you know, cheats or did he cheat or, you know, like all these oh. controversy things like, wow, what's that all? Of <laughs> yeah. You know, those were those were good days. Speedway racing back in the early 70s to early 80s was huge, N not only here in America, but in Europe. Yeah. So if it was like one of us young Americans that want to become world champion, we had to move to Europe and race in the British League. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I, I was over there in 78, and I was racing literally 155 nights out of the year. Oh, my gosh. I would, wow. I would, I would race sometimes like, you know, 30 days in a row and have one night off and then ride another 15. But, you know, it, it was the mecca of Speedway, and I was so fortunate. And it's, it's not until now that we've become a little bit older that we realize – how good we had it mm -hmm. and I actually got paid to do that and you know to me I just wanted to become world champion mm. it, it meant everything in my life and my father back in the day and of course my mom my mom didn't really want me racing my, my dad didn't so much either he wanted me to be a little more involved with the construction company yeah. concrete cutting but I loved racing and it was like my passion and then when I saw some of the young Americans or middle-aged Americans back in those days start doing so well, I said, this is all I want to do. Yeah, so that's I great. Made, I made a trip. I, th I think you set the perfect stage to tell some of your story. And um, I know you've got a lot of great components of your life. But wh why don't you just walk us through a little bit. How did, you, you know, you, you get through school and you, and you start looking at what you want to do. Um, your family had a successful construction company. You mm -hmm. mentioned your dad would like to have seen you in that. What decisions did you have to make at the time, um, you know, to do one or the other? And, and what was the thought process on that? Well, uh, back in those days, this is uh, back in about 1972, uh, my dad was a huge uh, boat racer, mm -hmm. um, power boats, and also big into unlimited airplanes racing at the reno air races he oh wow you don't big, hear that often he was into the you know p51 mustangs and he imported t33 trainers and i mean he loved you know flying mm -hmm. he couldn't fly when he was in the military because of his eyesight was so bad so he had done such a great job with uh, the penhall company concrete cutting that you know, in his later years, and I'm saying later years, he was only 43 and 44 years old. Right. To well, me these days, yeah. I'm 61, that's young. I would right? take that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he, he was doing great, and he loved airplanes, and he, he was racing them. So, you know, I, I grew up around a racing family, too, um, and my, my brother and I was were racing, you know, mini bikes at a young age, and my brother became big into off-road racing as 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 you you did jim and but mine was speedway i kind of raced motocross in a little bit in the beginning but mm -hmm. you know i took to the speedway racing and and you know he he always said you know you you work hard and you try the the very hardest you possibly can while my mom would basically lock herself into a bathroom because she was just she was terrified of and when we'd go to the air races I can remember my mom would get up and leave when my dad would fly and race uh -huh. because she was, you know, terrified of any sort of problems. Sure. So she was always, you know, very good to us, and she used to take me to the practice tracks all the time because I wasn't old enough to drive back in those days, and she they just let us do our thing. But my dad, I remember always saying that, you know, what's what's important is the the business here. You know, racing is great, but it might not be lifelong for you. Mm -hmm. You could do very well, and you you could you could be hurt by injury. So I really want you to concentrate on the on the company. 
I didn't do that very well. <laughs> I didn't do that very well. I was more into the racing side of things. Okay, so what what did that look like, Duff? You didn't do it very. Did did you work a nine to five job for your dad and then race afterwards? I I I started cleaning the bathrooms at a, at a young age. My parents were like, y- you know, you guys first and foremost school. Mm-hmm. Okay, if your grades drop, you're going to get your motorcycles taken away from you or motorcycle back in those days. Um, so it's really important to do well at school. And, you know, even at a young age, you're going to come and help out around the business. You guys have to always be doing something. You're not going to just sit on your butts and do nothing. So I, I started at the Penhall Company at a very young age, cleaning the bathrooms and doing what I was told to do. If I wanted to ride motorcycles, I I was then uh, – I became a saw cutter. Mm-hmm. I actually worked in the paint shop at the business too. Mm. Um at an early age, uh, they just they want us to be active, sure. You know, and 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 you you need to work and you need to go to school. So, you know, I I then became a saw cutter and I I found that man, this is what I really want to do. And um, m- both my parents were were killed in an airplane crash back in 1975, mm-hmm. uh, uh, leaving our mammoth house in my dad's uh, private airplane, and. Um, it was devastating. I'm to sure my, to my brother and my sister and I. You know, I mean, it really was. It's like I was 18 at the time, and it's okay. What do we do now? Well, I think what's what was really helpful was, you know, what we were taught to be, to work, and you know, to be to do the best you possibly can. Don't sit around and, you know, and do nothing. And I think that really made a strong impact on us growing up as kids, both my brother and my sister and I. And uh, uh, But then, you know, I, I, I was doing well, and I had an offer to go to England. And so uh, as hard as it was, you know, because one day you're without parents, and our parents were big in our lives. Yeah, I could imagine. Big in our lives. And they were no longer there, and we were having to deal with all of that and – it was very, very tough, but I had racing. Uh, my sister was doing well in school. My brother was in off-road racing at the time, and we just had to power through it. It's it's important in our lives. Is, you know, we're gonna we're gonna reach these obstacles in life. We all know that. You know. So let me ask you, what happened with the business after your parents passed? Did did it close down, or did you guys no, decide to run it? The the business uh, just it kept it kept going um there was a very good friend of my dad's that was a boat racer that was the vice president at the time roger stoll uh it was in my father and my mother's will to sell it to roger Mm -hmm. the company and we did that back in 1975 Mm -hmm. and you know my, my dad was pretty hardcore his his will stated that if anybody contests this will we'll be x'd out of it altogether wow there's no questions about anything. And, you know, our, my brother and sister and I, we took that sort of pace. Is like, you know what? My mom and dad this did this, not us. This is their their business, yeah. their pride and joy. Yeah. We do what they say. You yeah, know, sure. we, just, we just have to hang in there and try to continue on and put the first foot forward. So it was sold, and uh, – and it's still around to these days. It's become public, and 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 uh, Roger Stoll has been out of the business for quite some time. But the Penhall Company still is out there, the red and gray trucks, and they do do very very well. And yeah. it's just it's kind of funny because, m- you know, my business. I I hope my my mom and dad don't mind, but we're a, you know, strict competitors of of, of the Penhall Company now. Of course, I see your trucks all the time too. So you you decided to go to England, and what you're referring to is going over there as a, a racer for Speedway. Right. Yeah. For for our listeners, because I don't think it's super clear online, can you tell us what Speedway is? Speedway? It's so obvious to us, by the I way, know. but can you tell everybody else? It's it's not like motocross or, you know, uh, 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 road racing. Speedway is uh, their flat track bikes, basically, that have no brakes. And they only race on a on an oval track. Uh, in England, they're m- much different in size. Uh, basically, here in the United States, the tracks are very very small. Mm-hmm. But uh, Speedway, uh, where it's popular here in California, is Costa Mesa. It was big in San Bernardino, Bakersfield, Ventura, 
uh, Irwindale Raceway, mm -hmm. and it was so big back in those days. I mean, uh, I, to this day, people remember me more from from racing Speedway than they do chips, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh, but it was, you know, uh, my home track was the Costa Mesa Fairgrounds, man, and I remember going every 